Here's a challenge. Name a single ancient dynasty whose DNA perfectly matches its legend. You won't find one. From the European kings and czars to the supposed heirs of Genghis Khan, every genetic test reveals gaps, missing fathers, silent adoptions, and political rewrites that reshaped bloodlines into myths. Today, royal ancestry meets molecular evidence. The same Y chromosome markers that defined personal paternity now expose centuries of fabricated continuity. When ancient kings built their legitimacy on a sacred line of fathers and sons, DNA science now puts this into question. So why do royal bloodlines collapse under the simplest genetic test? Every dynasty looked to its lineage as proof of divine legitimacy, a sacred thread unbroken from ancestor to heir. Due to most of the world having a patriarchal setup, descent in royal families was counted mainly from father to his sons, and so on. But when that same thread is tested through the Y chromosome, one of nature's most reliable ledgers of paternal descent, it begins to unravel. The Y chromosome passes almost unchanged from father to son, generation after generation. If a royal genealogy were biologically accurate, all legitimate males in that house would share one Y haplogroup and a specific haplotype within. Yet genetic studies consistently show that they do not. The Y chromosome acts as a lifelong record keeper, carrying small mutations, SNPs, that cluster into identifiable branches called haplogroups. These branches reveal who truly shares a common paternal origin. Unlike written genealogies, the chromosome cannot be edited or rewritten to suit dynastic politics. It traces only the continuity of actual biological fathers and sons, regardless of what official chronicles claim. Research on the medieval rulers of Rus illustrates this contradiction more clearly than most. The genome of Prince Dmitry Alexandrovich, son of Grand Prince Alexander Nevsky, has been fully sequenced. His Y chromosome belongs to a specific subclade of haplogroup N1A, a lineage associated with northern Eurasian populations, more common to Finno-Ugric rather than Germanic people. That finding aligns closely with the Y-DNA of several modern men who also claim Rurikid descent and share nearly identical variants. This overlap strongly supports the idea of a shared paternal ancestor, stretching back to at least the 11th century, possibly to Prince Yaroslav the Wise, the most compelling genetic anchor yet for the Rurikid line. However, when researchers expanded their dataset, other samples attributed to the same dynasty returned strikingly different results. Remains identified as Prince Izyaslav Ingvarovich Lutsky displayed haplogroup R1A, while those attributed to Prince Gleb Sviatoslavich carried haplogroup I2A. The problem is that these burial sites from Chernigov and Lutsk cannot be conclusively tied to Rurikids by archaeological evidence alone, calling those genetic assignments into question. Even so, the presence of different Y lineages among supposed members highlights how varied the genetic picture becomes once the biological record is introduced. Where the N1A carriers share a tightly clustered Y sequence, the others exhibit high heterogeneity, too divergent to confirm a common paternal origin. This genetic diversity tells a deeper story. It suggests that dynastic continuity, as understood by historians, often depended more on political legitimacy than on literal descent from one founder. At various points, adoptions, strategic marriages, or unrecorded paternity events could have inserted new male lines into a royal genealogy without disrupting its social narrative. The family tree remained intact on parchment, but the chromosome silently diverged beneath it. Dimitri's broader genome confirms the same blending. His autosomal DNA contains components typical of early medieval Scandinavians from Oland, steppe nomadic groups, and East Eurasian populations, causing him to resemble a modern-day Kazan Tatar rather than a Russian or a Scandinavian. These mixtures trace the foreign alliances that sustained princely power. Marriages to Polovzi and Khan's daughters, and unions with Central or Southern European houses. The result was not a uniform bloodline, but a mosaic. Politically, legitimacy required the appearance of a single, unbroken male heritage. Genetically, no such purity existed. Modern sequencing exposes how fragile those claims were. The Rurikid example demonstrates that dynastic continuity was upheld through law, alliance, and narrative. Social mechanisms, 
not genetic ones. In genealogical language, their tree appears orderly. In genetic language, its trunk splits into several ancient roots. That gap between biology and history is why royal bloodlines rarely survive molecular scrutiny. Political history records who ruled, not who shared a chromosome. And the same tension appears wherever conquerors claim divine birthright. The rulers who emerge from the Eurasian steppe or the great sultans of later empires built their power on the same assumption of sacred descent until the Y chromosome began to tell a different story. Across the steppes and empires that followed, dynastic ancestry was rewritten again and again to match political need rather than biological truth. To see how far this rewriting went, you only have to look from the steppe khanates to the sultan's courts, where kingship was preserved through story, even as chromosomes told a different tale. Take the legend most often treated as biological fact. Genghis Khan's supposed millions of descendants. His conquest reshaped Eurasia, and his name became synonymous with genetic dominion. For a time, scientists believed that the vast spread of haplogroup C2M217, found from eastern Siberia to the Caspian, might confirm the myth of a single patriarch. But detailed genetic studies show a more intricate pattern. C2-M217 is indeed the dominant Y lineage in Central Asia, carried by roughly 44% of Kazakh men. Yet this majority conceals extensive variation. Frequencies swing from 11% in tribes such as Kongli and Argon to 100% in the tiny Shakshom group, a number based on just six sampled individuals. Even at first glance, that range makes clear that one man's Y chromosome could not have seeded them all. Deeper sequencing reinforces this complexity. Geneticists identified at least three major subclusters within C2-M217, which correlate broadly with the senior, middle, and junior zhuzhes, the great socio-territorial confederations defining Kazakh identity. Each zhuzh shows internal clustering by tribe, indicating that their paternal ancestry diverged long before the medieval Mongol era. In other words, even the lineage most associated with Genghis Khan is not one continuous branch, but several pre-existing trunks woven into a shared myth of descent, with an example being that the largest subclade of C2 in Kazakhstan, which is M48, is carried mainly by Western Kazakhs and has no relation to Genghis Khan's lineage, and likely appeared in Kazakhstan prior to Mongol invasions. The story grows more tangled when you move beyond C2. Other haplogroups appear in measurable frequencies, R, 12.8%, O, 8.03%, G, 7.9%, N, 6.9%, J, 6.2%, and Q, 3.1%. Some dominate specific tribes. More than 52% of men in the Naaman tribe carry O2M122, a lineage most common in East Asia. Roughly 54% of Argon males fall under G1-M285, typical of Iranian and West Central Asian populations. These are not statistical outliers. They are distinct paternal lines absorbed into elite steppe society through alliance and warfare. This is evident in the fact that Tore, which is a clan that is supposed to be exclusively made up of Genghis Khan's descendants, actually has some of the highest genetic variation within itself, often carrying clades from other larger tribes in the Kazakh nation, meaning that likely some people from common tribes found their way into the Tore clan and thus became nobility. Population analysis quantifies how social order shaped this variation. About 9% of genetic differences appear among the three zhuzhes, while 20% arise among tribes within them. The figures show a society where horizontal exchange through intermarriage, alliance, or conquest, outweighed strict vertical descent. The Y chromosome map ends up as a mosaic rather than a lineage, a record of political incorporation, not reproductive continuity. The Torre aristocracy could preserve the symbol of descent from Genghis Khan long after its biological foundation had splintered into unrelated lines. This dynamic, social legitimacy outlasting genetic inheritance, was not confined to the steppe. In the sultanates and imperial courts that inherited steppe traditions, the principle remained the same. Succession moved through brothers, nephews, or appointed heirs, often shaped by concubinage, palace intrigue, or strategic alliance. Genealogies stayed intact on parchment, 
but each generation's paternal signature could differ entirely. Here again, legitimacy rested on recognition by law and faith, not on continuity of the Y chromosome. From Mongolia's open plains to Istanbul's palaces, science now retraces how royal identity evolved through politics rather than blood. Genetic evidence does not erase those dynasties. It simply replaces mythic purity with recorded diversity. And as these sequences come into focus, the patterns point to a larger truth about how ancestry really works, one that reaches far beyond the families who once ruled. Royal ancestry once promised a flawless chain of fathers and sons, a continuity no empire could question, but genetic evidence has dismantled that image. The record left in our chromosomes reveals intricate mosaics, lineages of unrelated men united by law, memory, and myth rather than uninterrupted descent. Every dynasty, from the steppe Khans to the crown families of Europe, sustained legitimacy through ritual and recognition, not through a single Y chromosome. That same science now extends far beyond royal archives. A simple DNA test can show your haplogroup and how your family's history threads into the wider genetic landscape. The ultimate paternity test isn't reserved for kings, it's for anyone curious enough to see ancestry proven in molecular detail.